Alphabetically, we're almost done with West Africa. We're almost done with the peanuts and red palm oil. So, what's Stu got in store for us tonight? And welcome back to Cliffy Land. This is weekend country number 154 on a second attempt of cooking the food of every single country in the world. And tonight, over to the nation of Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone, located on the southwestern coast of West Africa, is bordered by Guinea and Liberia, and its food is very typical of that of West Africa, with a lot of dishes that overlap the area. You'll find a lot of dishes, sort of like the peanut stew that we made for Guinea, as well as the rice jollof, which I tried to do for Liberia, to mixed results shall we say. One of the most common ingredients in the food of Sierra Leone is going to be rice. In fact, it's not considered dinner if it doesn't have rice in it somehow. There are a lot of dishes that involve locally grown fruits and vegetables, and a specific thing is dishes made out of cassava leaves, which I understand are very delicious, but try as I might, I've never been able to find them here. Someday I will taste them. I'm sure they're really delicious, but unfortunately we're limited with what we can actually find in terms of dishes. So we face this last time, so let's take a look and see how things went when we tried things before. Well, four years ago on the Global Cooking Challenge, I was able to cook across two nights, and the first night I made a sweet potato corned beef fritter, which I hope was traditional, or maybe it wasn't, but in any case, it was very nice, but that's not what we're doing tonight. What we are doing is what we did on the second night here, which is a beef and okra stew, which originated in a book of recipes from Sierra Leone that was reproduced or adapted by an online blogger, and we're gonna try to kind of adapted back if it's possible. Now what we did last time is we followed the blogger's advice and we blended our ingredients beforehand and it came out rather nicely but this time I'm gonna try to do it as best as I can understand is the traditional way of doing it. But before we go any further we have to see what ingredients go into tonight's dish. For our okra stew with beef and eggplant we'll need one and a half pounds of cubed beef, a quarter cup of sustainable red palm oil, one quart of beef stock, one onion roughly chopped, eight okra pods stemmed and chopped, one large eggplant chopped, three tomatoes chopped, optionally one habanero pepper, and salt and pepper to taste. This is gonna be really good. I suggest you have some kind of food mill, food processor, or best yet a wand blender for this one, but it's gonna be really good. We gotta get cooking. Season the beef with salt and pepper. Heat a large saucepan or Dutch oven over medium high heat. Drop in the red palm oil. If the pot is hot enough, it will smoke. Then, in batches, quickly add the meat and brown it on all sides. Preserve the seared meat onto a plate until all have been browned. Reduce the heat to medium, then add the onions, and saute briefly to coat it in oil. Add the eggplant, okra, and tomato, and mix well. Cook until softened, about 5-7 to seven minutes, and then add the beef back in. Add the beef broth and bring that to a boil. Slit and add in the habanero pepper if using. Reduce the heat to low. Cover and let cook for three hours for the tenderest beef. Uncover. Extract the beef from the pot. Pass the vegetables and broth through a food processor. A wand blender though works a lot better for this. Puree until smooth. Taste and season with salt and pepper as needed. Add the beef back in, bring back up to a boil, reduce the heat and let it simmer a few minutes more. Plate servings of rice on plates or in stew bowls, ladle servings of the stew on top, wipe plates, optionally garnish with fresh parsley, and serve hot. turn 
turned out, well, it was really delicious. It was a nice hearty stew. As I understand it, this dish is considered a soup when it's served by itself, and when it's served over rice, it's considered a stew, which makes sense because it was very much soup-like without the rice. It had those nice flavors of the vegetables all mixed in. The okra did a nice job of sort of thickening it a bit, but not a whole lot. It had that nice radiant heat from the jalapeno pepper, which we did take out before actually serving the dish. And since I seared the meat beforehand, even though it did make my smoke detector go crazy, it did a nice job of holding the meat together so that when it cooked for a long time, it was really nice and tender. Unlike last time that only cooked for 30 minutes and the beef was kind of chewy. So that made it really delicious and juicy. It was a fantastic dish. My only complaint is if I was gonna do things myself, I would probably add some peanuts in there to give it a little bit of crunch or maybe something else like lemon or something to give it a little bit of sourness. As it stood, it was a really, really delicious dish. I enjoyed it. We're going to give that one four to five globes, a really nice stew. It's really great having all these terrific dishes from West Africa. I believe we have only one more left to go when we get to the teas. But next week, we leave Africa to head back to Southeast Asia to have the legendary and challenging food of Singapore. See you then. And remember, if you'd like to be advised when these videos are posted, please be sure to follow us on Periscope. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Like and subscribe if you'd like to be advised when these videos are posted, and be sure to hit that bell to get those notifications. Remember, links to the original recipes can be found in the About section. If you have any thoughtful feelings or helpful suggestions about the food reading, please be sure to sound off in the comments. Thanks for watching, and happy eating!